Hello everyone, we are live. We're just going to wait a few moments before getting started with today's um, webinar. We're going to give people a couple of uh, uh, minutes to find their, find their way onto the call and uh, join us with today's webinar. If you're with me, if you can hear this, just uh, take a second and there should be a chat bar on the right hand side of your screen or somewhere on your screen. If you don't mind um, typing in uh, your name and where you're where you're uh, signing in from, we've got Krista from New Brunswick, Canada. Hi, Krista. We've got Marin from San Antonio, Texas. Wanda says hello. Christian is from Cardiff, UK. Hi, Christian. Hi, Cora. Holy smokes! And they start rolling in. I can't even. Uh, I see someone from a couple people from Portland, Oregon. I'm gonna have to take a second to. Uh, to ba run back through um, all of these uh, these chat messages. We've got lots of people joining us today. We've got a very full house on uh, today's webinar with Brian Mark Taylor. In just a second, like I said, we're gonna wait a, another couple of moments before getting started with today's webinar. Virginia from, oh, I missed it. I'm sorry, Virginia. Scott from Louisiana. I see Lucy from BC, Canada, Dale from New Brunswick, Tabby from Montana. Hi, Tabby. Hello, Cynthia, Sue, and Jim from Portland. You guys are giving my eyes a real workout. That's tough. Robert from San Diego. Carolyn from Iowa. We're doing a good job of uh, representing uh, people from all over the world today on uh, the webinar. So thank you to everyone for uh, for making the time to join us. Just a couple more seconds now. We've got a lot of uh, material to cover, so I don't want to take too much of your time right up front. Hello, everyone. Tom from Magnolia, Texas. Julie from D.C. Susan from Florida. Hello, everyone. All right, we're going to get moving here very, very quickly. Let me turn this over to me for a second. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, today's webinar with Brian Mark Taylor. We're going to be discussing the topic of mastery uh, with you guys today. I'm Dale Dabloski. I manage digital projects here at Streamline Publishing. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to take a second to uh, touch on a bit of housekeeping. Um, today's presentation is going to cover a lot of ground, so please, cell phones off, make sure you're comfortable, you've got a glass of water, uh, minimize all other distractions so we can uh, we can get through today's presentation. You're going to love it. Um, because we rely on the magic of the internet to make this thing happen, it also means we're at the mercy of internet connections, our internet connection, your internet connection. So if at times the picture looks a little bit blurry, um, I'd ask that you uh, either hold on um, a little bit. It could usually clears itself up if you hold on for a sec. If it does get a bit unbearable, uh, what we found works sometimes is if you just close the connection and click back in and open up the uh, the webinar again really quickly, and that does often clear it up if you have some some issues. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Uh, you're best to run your webinar from a hardwired connection. So if you're using Wi-Fi, please try to uh, make sure you don't have other programs running in the background eating into your bandwidth because that might cause a blurry screen as well. So no Netflix uh, running in the other room. And in order to make sure we get through everything today, we've got a packed, packed presentation. Uh, we're going to hold questions until the end of the webinar. If you do have questions about anything in particular, something that um, Brian has touched on or something that uh, he hasn't he hasn't uh, touched on, uh, please uh, do type it into the chat bar where everyone is typing, uh, you guys are typing your um, uh, your locations at right now. We appreciate everyone who is on the call today. So once again, in order to keep things moving, we're gonna hold questions until later. I'm gonna uh, uh, write down some questions as we go along and we're gonna have Brian answer those questions as we get uh, toward the end of the webinar. Um, I did see the question pop up already whether there was going to be a replay and the answer to that is yes. So a couple of hours 
after this webinar, once the video uh, um, has been completed, you're going to get an email uh, in your inbox with a link to the replay. So you can watch it there at your leisure in case you have to hop off at any point in time. You are going to want to stick around because we do have um, some interesting stuff. I'll let Brian talk about that when uh, when he gets on the call here. Um, it's some interesting stuff that you're going to want to stick around for. So let's, uh, it's enough from me. We're going to get going with today's webinar. Uh, Eric Rhodes, the publisher of uh, Plein Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, couldn't be on the call today. He uh, He's the one who set this webinar up for us. Uh, he's in Acadia Park in Maine hosting our Fall Color Week painting event right now. But he did um, uh, send over or record and send over this video, which I'm about to play for you, assuming the technology is going to uh, cooperate with us here. So let's see how this goes. webinar whether or not you do the DVD that's entirely up to you of course but uh, we, we really want you to get this information and to learn it because uh, you can speed up your mastery of anything whether it's painting or, or music or or something else but because it's all based on how the brain works so we hope you enjoy it again I'm sorry I couldn't be there I had to be traveling at the time we're doing this thanks bye All right, there we go. There was a quick note from um, Eric Rhodes, uh, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazines. Once again, the fellow who put this whole thing together for us all today. Um, so now I want to take a moment to introduce you to your speaker for today. He's a highly accomplished painter, lecturer, inventor, and world traveler. And he can be described, described as nothing other than a true Renaissance man. His list of accomplishments have been many. Um, as a painter, Brian Mark Taylor has won numerous top awards at the nation's most prestigious plein air invitationals and his work has been shown in museums and galleries across the country. He recently won a gold medal at the California Art Club's Gold Medal Show and Brian's paintings are represented by galleries in California, Colorado and Utah. Um, he's been featured in numerous magazines including our own um, Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air magazines. Brian's a sought-after teacher and lecturer and has taught uh, around the country, including the Academy of Art University, Pixar, and the Scottsdale Artist School. Just last year, uh, Brian gave a presentation on the topic of mastery to a full house at the Plein Air Convention and Expo, and it was a hit. Uh, today, he's here to expand on this subject for you. So, folks, please welcome Brian Mark Taylor. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here. So am I live? Is there, can everybody see me okay? You are live. You are live. Yes. That's fantastic. Well, it's, it's great to be with you here, and um, we've got a lot to cover, and so I, I'd love to just uh, jump into it. Uh, I will give you a little bit more of background on how I, I got onto this, um, this uh, scientific research, uh, just so that you know where I'm coming from, and this is really something that um, has gotten, that's fundamentally changed the way I paint, the way I practice, and in a lot of ways, uh, my life. So I'm really happy to uh, share it with you. I, I honestly, to be honest with you, uh, one of the things that uh, I have to say is for a while, I, I didn't share this, this, these things that I learned because I was, I was thinking, well, it'd give me a little bit of a competitive advantage. Uh, but, you know, it, it is really not my temperament. Um, and as a as a teacher, uh, it, I think it's uh, it, it's not 
you need to you, you need to let these things out. And so I'm really excited to share these uh, things that I've learned with you. Um, what we'll do is I'm going to go back and forth between uh, some slides, just so we have some images that will help to um, kind of uh, center the discussion around. And with those images, I'll also um, uh, create some metaphors in order to so that you can remember some of the things that we talked about. Okay, uh, so let's let's go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, screen share. Uh, so you can see my desktop, and I'm going to uh, load a, um, a slide presentation on here. So uh, let me know if uh, you're not seeing it. We've got you, yep. Got me okay? Yep, looks great. Okay, good. All right, well, let's, get, let's get started here. Uh, this uh, this first uh, piece, obviously, you know, most everybody knows that this is the Pietà by Michelangelo, and he did this when he was, uh, uh, they say, 21 years old. And uh, you know, I, as a 19-year-old, I was fortunate to uh, live in Italy for a couple of years, and I was blown away by the art there in Italy, and in particular, the art of the Renaissance. And of course. Many of you have probably seen this sculpture and others, other artworks by Michelangelo, and I just uh, I was uh, blown away by uh, something a talent of this caliber. And uh, I went and read the Vasari's book. Vasari was a contemporary of Michelangelo, and he he wrote kind of in the introduction of that book that um, uh, God took pity on the art. Uh, or th that was going on in that uh, day and age. And so he sent down a genius named Michelangelo to the earth so that he could ri raise everybody up uh, to a higher level of art. And, and certainly that's, uh, that's what happened with uh, Michelangelo. He, he raised the level uh, of artwork. But uh, it's interesting, those ideas from the Renaissance, uh, this um, almost mystical approach to uh, the life of Michelangelo and other art, great artists, uh, those ideas uh, about their talent and genius uh, continue to this day. And what I'm going to, uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to uh, call into question and debunk the myth of uh, a talent. Now, even today, uh, we we talk about people as being talented, and also we talk about people uh, maybe in a more secular uh, you know, scientific era, we would say people have maybe a good set of genes. Uh, you know, the genetics uh, play a huge role. But uh, what I want to talk to you about is that uh, really the most important thing that we have is the mind, the brain's adaptability. You know, the human species is uh, incredibly, the, the brains are incredibly adaptable and have enabled us to live on uh, and survive on every continent in the world, uh, even though our ancestors were, you know, the cradle of civilization, they say, is, is in, a, in a place in Africa. Yet with our technology, with the way that we um, have been able to uh, utilize uh, clothing, tools, different things, uh, we've been able to adapt and live in any, any type of place. Well, that same part of our, that, that same ability in our mind to adapt like that uh, works as well uh, in terms of uh, uh, developing mastery. And so even somebody like Michelangelo, uh, he was uh, formed uh, in large part because of his um, his fortune of being born in an area and in a time and a place where he could have the, uh, the necessary uh, tools and supportive network in order to uh, develop this uh, level of mastery. So instead of uh, going with this idea of just it's a natural and mystical ability. If let's let's uh, go inside the mind and see that there are um, there's something behind all of this uh, that uh, science is now able to through neural imaging and, and other techniques uh, able to uncover. So uh, next slide here, and I know that's quite a contrast between the two, where you have uh, a beautiful Pieta and then um, the Darth Vader. But you know it's interesting. There is a parallel between those two in that uh, in popular uh, fiction today, we still 
have these iconic figures that um, have this certain extra gift, this uh, mystical ability, uh, so that uh, you know that he could, you know, these people can use this uh, force. Um, but the interesting thing about that, there, there is a dark side to this belief of talent. Okay. And the dark side to this belief in talent is that um, if we buy into that idea, what it does is, uh, in a way, can excuse us from doing the work ourselves. But if we, again, peel back uh, the, the aura that surrounds uh, some uh, of these artists and other people like Michelangelo or artists today that we may feel that have a greater amount of talent than we do, uh, if we if we look behind the scenes and also travel inside the head at, neuro, at the head at a neurological level, we can we can see that that there's a different story to be told. And uh, the problem is with this with talent is that or this belief that we have in talent, um, it can cause mm -hmm. us to prematurely stop, to give up, to not have hope. Uh, and so. Uh, what I want to do is, is show that there is very uh, tangible hope for each one of us because we have the same uh, type of adaptability in our brain as uh, some of these great uh, master artists do. Okay, so uh, here, we, here we have this picture of the you know, hope in the clouds, right? And for many years, um, I, I had this hope that I could uh, be an artist, be a professional artist, you know, as a kid, you know, I'd you know, I had this hope, but I, I really couldn't pin it on anything other than um, maybe uh, some positive psychology that I had as a kid. Um, you know, it, it wasn't terribly tangible. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about some things that are very tangible in the way that we can pin our hopes on. Uh, so let's let's start here with uh, Brian Tracy. Many of you, or some of you, may know who Brian Tracy is, and Brian Tracy is. Uh, he, he's been doing positive psychology and motivational speaking for decades now, and I was uh, exposed to his uh, speaking uh, early at an early age. Uh, in fact, I remember my dad and I—we were driving up to uh, Idaho. Uh, I, I lived in Utah. I was raised in Utah, born in Oregon, raised in Utah. Anyway, he'd go up to see his parents up in Idaho, and, and one, on one occasion, uh, we went. Uh, up up there, and he was listening to one of these um, motivational speaking um, uh, series, and, and in particular, he liked uh, this guy Brian Tracy. And I remember he stopped the the, uh, the tape; it was a cassette tape at the time. And he um, turned to me, and I was eight years old. It was just he and I. And he said, "Hey, if you could be anything you wanted to be, what would what would you want? What would you like to be?" And I told him I wanted to be an artist, and it kind of blew his mind. Uh, you know, he had no idea I was interested in art. Uh, there's eight kids in my family, so I was a middle child. He he didn't know what was going on. Uh, but anyway, to his credit, you know, asking that question, um, he and um, you know, telling him, you know, how interested I was in it. Uh, they they later, a couple of weeks later, found me in art school. Found an art school where I I started my training as as an artist, and and it's been a love affair ever since. Now it's interesting, though, with with Brian Tracy, even uh, as as well-meaning as he is, uh, and 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 he's definitely um, been a help to me and and so many others, uh, and my dad as well. But um, a lot of the evidence that he would present uh, in those in those years, eighties and and nineties, were um, anecdotally based, and you know, talking about just working hard and kind of. The Horatio Alger's kind of uh, way of doing things, like pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? Well, uh, the thing is, um, you always have this lingering doubt, like, do I have the talent to, you know, to be, you know, um, you know, a master at something? Um, because there wasn't really any uh, real proof of it. So, is this just positive psychology? And you know, I would even get frustrated with it, like, you know, this, you know, to a degree. It's inspiring, but is it is it really true? Okay, so let's um, uh, fast forward here. Now we're in the uh, 2000, uh, we get into 2005, and a uh, landmark uh, book and set of research papers uh, really fundamentally changed uh, the way I worked and the way I viewed uh, mastering art. And so 
And this um, has a lot to do with Dr. Anders Ericsson, who's out of Florida State University. Uh, he uh, published uh, work along with others uh, called the Cambridge Guide of Expertise and Expert Performance. And uh, in that research, uh, they could show uh, uh, through various fields with like chess masters, uh, Olympians, um, musicians, uh, in a lot of different fields, that it doesn't, it doesn't matter what field it was or who it was, nobody was achieving mastery earlier, regardless of their genetic endowment. Uh, they weren't uh, seeing um, mastery being achieved faster than, uh, generally than 10 years. And so uh, even they have gone through and looked at Mozart and other things. And so uh, it, it's really interesting with the data crunching, uh, with a lot of research they've done in all these fields, they were able to um, uh, publish some pr pretty convincing evidence on it. And this got a lot of people really excited, including Malcolm Gladwell, among others. And Malcolm Gladwell wrote you know, the well-known book, Outliers. And uh, basically what he was showing is that, you know, debunking that myth that we have that some people are just, uh, you know, born super talented or a, a genius uh, and it didn't take as, that much effort to get where they're at. And so, you know, uh, anyway, he touched on a lot of the things that Anders Ericsson uh, talked about. Now, it's not just Florida State University because with uh, science-based things, you, uh, you can't just have one researcher doing... Um, you know, making claims. Uh, there, so uh, there are other researchers that are doing uh, meta-analysis of these uh, kinds of things, and also coming up with uh, additional insights. And and one of those people is uh, Carol Dweck. I didn't write her name here. I apologize. But Carol Dweck, um, she's out of uh, Stanford University, and uh, Carol is also shown uh, through research and uh, clinical psychology that. Um, uh, really, it, is, it has to do with our mindset, the way we think about talent, the way we uh, think about um, how our ability to grow. And what she's really show, demonstrated uh, through a number of, number of studies, research studies, is that uh, people that have uh, the right mindset, a growth mindset, the, that buy into the idea, have, have the belief that the mind is adaptable, it can change, uh, they can not only um, increase their mastery in a given field, but also increase their capacity to learn faster. So, uh, and that's, uh, she has a, a popular book that has come out called Mindset. And that has definitely changed the way um, uh, through that research and the body, a growing body of evidence that they, that uh, these two, just to name two uh, researchers that have been doing for many years, uh, that there are, uh, this this uh, big large body of evidence that really the way people uh, learn, the way they study, and their attitudes about how uh, about how a mind can learn and grow really shape the way uh, uh, people uh, uh, go on to mastery or maybe squander their their years and, and don't learn what they need to learn. Uh, so uh, let me go back here. Uh, with uh, this slide, and this is uh, this is a part of it. So, uh, part of the research has has been um, with clinical psychology, where they've done certain tests and certain um, things, where they've even with the memory, for example, of chess masters. So they test uh, chess masters and see uh, how good their memory is on the chessboard, which is phenomenal, way above uh, a normal uh, people like you and me. But when they do that same memory tests for outside the field of chess, they have uh, their their minds and memory are are the same uh, as as you and I, and so it's only in that certain field where they have been able to ha develop an, an extraordinary memory, and it and it's because of the way they studied, and so they can uh, actually see the changes in the brain uh, that occur. Uh, by doing these uh, MRI scans. And so uh, that's where uh, neuroplasticity comes in. And what they used to believe uh, before we could scan the brain and see the changes that are occurring is that changes in the brain don't uh, really occur after you're in your younger years. You know, you get up to the age of eight and your mind is pretty much uh, solidified and 
and baked, and you, you can't do a whole lot about it. But uh, through uh, neuroimaging, uh, that's, that's absolutely not true. Things can evolve and change depending on the stimulus uh, that you put on the brain, even up uh, into your advanced years. So that's uh, something that, it, that is proven through these uh, uh, brain changes. And, and here's uh, just a little example. Um, so let, let me go uh, and, and talk, let me talk specifically about, you know, we've, we've talked generally about the um, mastery that we could, that somebody, you and I can achieve in, in basically anything. But one thing we want to talk about is specifically in the field of art, how do we um, strengthen ourselves um, and uh, get onto that path of mastery. So uh, one of the major ways, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, Olympian or, you know, or it's uh, an artist, uh, there are certain ways because of how the mind works that we need to train uh, in order to get the most out of our painting time. Now, um, one thing I would like to ask if, uh, um, Dale, if you could help me out here. I think, yep. he, yes. I think, yep. I think he's put uh, uh, within the live chat um, a poll. Uh, have, have you seen any results come in from that poll? Sorry, no, I haven't run the poll. I can do that quickly. Which uh, which question would you like to run? Um, you know, as far as the poll goes, I'm just curious to know just the age of it, uh, everybody, uh, okay. general age. Okay, that's uh, started right now. Okay. Am I still sharing my screen here? Just want to make sure. I, no, I can see we've got you now. Okay, great. Um, I've got some of the uh, the answers are coming in. About 54% are in the 46 to 65 range. Okay. Uh, 34, 35% are 65 plus. Uh, those numbers are staying pretty uh, consistent right now. 9%, 10% 30, 31 to 45, and 3% 15 to 30. And we have a, a huge group of people on the call today. Uh, it's actually interesting to see these numbers uh, are staying pretty, pretty static. Okay. Give it a couple more minutes and we'll end that poll. But you've got 54% at 46 to 65 years old. Okay. So um, just full disclosure here, if anybody's wondering, I'm 39. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm past, past my prime, definitely. And it uh, looks like most of the group is a bit. And so uh, one of the things that, that I mentioned earlier is that our um, – the, the neural connections and the things that happen, they, they do slow down as we, as we get older a little bit. So with our painting time, we do need to make sure that what we're doing is actually making a difference, right? We want to, we want to um, know that when we, you know, make that time because we have busy lives, you know, I have four kids, uh, lots of responsibilities, uh, running a company, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, and then trying to meet all these deadlines with paintings and stuff like that. We, 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 have, we have busy lives, so uh, you know, how do we make the most of our time? Well, what, what we want to do is we want to focus on, on the core, uh, of uh, the core exercises. Those are the things that will make the biggest difference in the way that we practice. And uh, if any of you taken a yoga class or a Pilates class, you know that it's all about uh, keeping your core strong. If, if you don't have a strong core, you're not able to do a lot of the things that you want to do. And so in painting, there are certain core exercises that we need to do in order to um, enable us to do the things that we want to do, the types of paintings that we would like to make. Okay, so what I'm gonna go back to the, the slide here. Um, am, I, am I sharing my screen? Uh, we've got you right now. You got me? Okay, let's see. Can you, can you see the screen now? There you go, yep. Okay. So we're going to go back into full screen mode, go back into the slide. So here's an example of a, a woman uh, strengthening her core. And I've done some of these core exercises, and it's fundamentally changed. You know, I was dealing with a lot of back pain from painting too much, time, too much, too many hours in a row and too many months and years in a row. But uh, anyway, there's, there's, a, there's a strong parallel here to the, the way we need to practice. And if, we, if we strengthen these core um, things, and every field has them, uh, we can 
we can uh, definitely uh, make the most of our, our painting time. So I'll talk more, more on that in, in just a bit. Okay, so one of the things that we're trying to do uh, when we are going into a, a new field or with painting in general is that we want to discover um, what the patterns are with uh, certain types of art. Now, if you look at these shapes, and uh, those of you that are not in the U.S., uh, probably look at these shapes, and uh, may take take you a minute for the, to recognize that they're all states. They're part of the the 50 states in the in the United States. Those of you who are great at geography probably knew immediately from these shapes what they were. Uh, you were able to recognize these patterns uh, in, in the shapes and and what states they are. You probably could. Some of you could probably name all of them. Well, that helps you memorize it much quicker if you if you know each one of these states. Now, if you are in England or if you're in a uh, uh, in Russia or in another location, it's going to take a little bit longer. And that's because uh, you don't recognize the pattern. Uh, and what we need to do uh, as artists, in order to know what, uh, as I go back here, what the core exercises are, is we need to find somebody who is very familiar with uh, the patterns that make up um, a good painting. Uh, and and so that's where uh, finding uh, the right uh, person uh, or the right coach can, can make a huge difference because they recognize uh, these patterns because of their familiarity with, um, with those patterns, okay? Okay, so here's an example of uh, this uh, Korean girl. She was uh, one of three that uh, won the gold medal at the most recent Olympics uh, in archery. And uh, this Korean team, uh, even though the, uh, the archers have changed over the years, they've won it eight times in a row uh, ever since it was instituted. Uh, the Korean team has, has won it. And so uh, they've had a change out of different arch, you know, different uh, uh, women that have uh, compete, uh, competed in this uh, uh, archery competition. But anyway, uh, all of them, they, there's a certain type of practice which they do that has uh, definitely enabled them to excel in, in their particular uh, arena here. And that's not to say that the other Olympians aren't doing some of the things they're doing. Uh, they're just doing them uh, better, and that uh, shows in their uh, consistently winning the gold medal. And they interviewed um, one, of the, one of the girls, and she talked about how uh, before she goes to bed at night, she envisions, she's still thinking about archery even in her sleep. And so she's using these uh, uh, mental techniques in order to um, uh, even learn while she is uh, sleeping. So really, one of the things that um, great uh, coaches that are coaching teams like this have learned is that there are so certain techniques that help the mind build the neural connections in order to uh, do things with greater precision, more accuracy, and uh, so let's let's talk about what those are. Okay, so uh, the first one is uh, linear perspective. So I'm going to go through some of the core exercises uh, that relate to our particular field, which is uh, painting or uh, even uh, sculpting, uh, and um, and and how that relates to mastery in in our field. So uh, again, with this idea this uh, this girl has learned uh, this what is called uh, so Anders Ericsson the the guy that I showed you at the beginning he, he has through all this in all these interviews and all this research he he calls uh, this idea of deliberate pr practice the gold standard of expertise um, or, or of becoming an, an expert in any field so you know what is deliberate practice well deliberate practice is different from a regular practice uh, in that it is uh, very focused. It also has to do with a field that there are a number of experts, uh, as well as a field where there's a, a long tradition, even hundreds of years, of, of artists or uh, musicians that have um, uh, pushed the very edge of, of ex expertise. And so uh, with painting, we are, we're definitely in that realm. Okay, of a well-established field, and so part of what we need to do is is find the right coaches. We need to be very focused and very specific, and we're aiming for a certain target. And that's why I like to use this uh, picture. 
is that if uh, when we go to practice, if we don't have a very specific target uh, that we're trying to hit, then uh, more often than not, even with our best intentions, even if we're concentrating, uh, we're not going to get the, we're not going to uh, advance as fast as we could. A big part of it is that we need to have a bullseye that we're aiming for. Okay, and in some ways that's hard. That's hard to do. So, what is that? What are the the bullseyes that we're aiming for? Okay, so going back to this uh, linear perspective. So this is one of the demos I did in the DVD where we're uh, talking about linear perspective. Now, linear perspective. In a lot of ways, there is a, you know, there's a there's a right and wrong to it, and either you have it going in the right direction, like with one point perspective, two point or three point, or it's not going in the right direction and things look distorted or flat. Okay, so this is one of the things that was discovered in the Renaissance that fundamentally changed the way artists were painting and drawing and helped develop a three dimensional form in uh, landscape or in figures or uh, in, in, in any any parts of landscape and this this is an amazing discovery and so this is one of those things where you know a lot of people say hey there's there's no right and wrong to art uh, well uh, I don't think that's a very helpful uh, to somebody that's just learning about art uh, I guarantee you that linear perspective learning linear perspective whether you want to be in um, the most uh, avant-garde, um, off-the-wall artist, uh, where you're doing installation type art, I, I don't see linear perspective. Learning it will hurt you. Now, and and even more so as a uh, an artist that wants to uh, develop a, a certain realism in their work, linear perspective is just a, a fundamental part of that. And so, linear perspective is a bullseye that we want to work on, that we want to hit. Okay, we want to be able to do it at will. And so it's one of the things that we have to work on if we want to develop our art, train our eye to see uh, three-dimensionally, okay? Uh, another one, here's a painting that I did that it really focuses on light and shadow. Uh, and my understanding of light and shadow definitely helped me uh, create this painting. So uh, again, if I, if I don't understand how light and shadow works, uh, you know, if you haven't done the practices where you have a ball, you light it up, or a lemon, or, or whatever it is, and you um, study how light and shadow work, uh, you're not going to create a sense of, of light in your work. It's, it's just not going to be there. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll kind of say, yeah, I need to, I need to get, and get to that, but I'm too busy painting uh, to, to really sit down and work on it. Or I don't want to uh, take time away from my painting time having fun to... To work on light and shadow and what happens is that lingering problem can go on for years and years and years uh, you could be you could do thousands of paintings and still not get a, a true a great understanding of how light and shadow works um, uh, and and you'll see a lot of modern painters that haven't uh, taken the time like Picasso did to learn some of the basics before going off into kind of different uh, creative realms they would just um, they, they 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 jump off too early before learning this stuff, and it's a, and it always plagues them uh, forever after. So uh, light and shadow, there's a physics to it. There is um, a way. And this is how the universe works, and so understanding uh, how light and shadow works is is one of those things. It's another bullseye that we can uh, focus on in order to enhance our, the quality of our work. Okay, next one is uh, atmosphere. Uh, this is a, a painting of um, that area in northern Utah where, when I was with my dad, the story I told you about earlier. And you can see things getting lighter and bluer as they go back in space. Uh, atmosphere, again, uh, is talking about the physics uh, and the uh, just the very nature of how the world or the natural world works. And it's something that can be a very specific bullseye that we need to work on. These are, these are core uh, skills that we need to develop. And they are um, very specific, and they have been, uh, and, and they've taken hundreds of years to develop. So we have lots of examples of master artists that have done these things that we can look to to um, improve our work. Okay, next one's composition. So here's uh, a cityscape that I did, and a lot of it has to do with division of space and proportion. 
So there's um, uh, a doctor uh, down in Southern California. Uh, his name is Stephen Marquette, and he uh, developed a mask. It's called an RF mask. And basically, this mask uh, shows that uh, we uh, instinctually respond, and, and a lot of people, because of evolution, uh, 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 have learned that uh, we respond to certain, uh, uh, you could say, even golden section or certain proportions of beauty. And we uh, judge each other's fitness based on that, just like uh, the animal kingdom in general. Um, that uh, if people are closer to that um, that uh, ideal standard, we uh, naturally respond to it. Now, the same thing is true even on an abstract level. If we have a certain amount, certain uh, spatial division that goes on in uh, a painting, we're going to respond to it differently than if somebody doesn't know. Uh, how to divide things or if, if things are too even or uh, you know repetitive or, or boring it's this idea of dynamic symmetry now dynamic symmetry in a lot of ways was uh, discovered and um, refined in the Greek era and the Greeks uh, have fortunately left a long record of of some of the things that they've done you look at the proportions in their vases and in their temples uh, in their sculptures uh, these are things that uh, artists even today keep going back to. And the reason why they keep going back to it is because by, on a biological level, we respond to it. And so research has shown uh, that um, that's absolutely true. So this, this uh, doctor, Stephen Marquette, he actually does, he's a plastic surgeon and bases his decisions of plastic surgery based on these universal masks that he has developed. And... I guarantee if he's going to be cutting into somebody's face, he's going to be pretty certain about uh, the the nature of uh, or that he's doing the right thing, right? Other, otherwise, he'd be um, he wouldn't be a, a doctor very long. So, uh, composition is another one of those core core principles that can be uh, developed. Okay, next one would be color. This is uh, one of the quick demos that I did uh, in in the Master's Mind DVD based on color. And what I did is I used some, uh, uh, I based uh, these color decisions off another master, which was Joaquin Soroya. And Soroya learned some things from the Impressionists. Uh, and so it goes around where um, we're all influenced uh, to some degree by certain discoveries that are made about color and light, um, about warms and cools. And so these are things that we can, we can learn as well. Uh, but if we don't have the, the proper training, we can... Uh, think we're being inventive with color, but we won't come any closer to uh, having an understanding of it if, unless we get kind of that proper um, uh, proper uh, training on it, okay? So uh, these are some of the things that uh, I would consider uh, core principles as they relate specifically to landscape painting, but also can relate um, to uh, any type of painting or, or even sculpture that, that you would want to do, okay? Okay, so let's, um, what we're trying to do is we're put, trying to put the puzzle together. So let me just get off the, the slides here for a second uh, so you don't get uh, overly inundated with it. Okay, uh, with, when we look at a, a puzzle, you know, how do we start the puzzle? How, how, do, we, how do we put it together? Uh, well, if, if I started and, and put this puzzle together by not doing the borders first, but doing all the nebulous areas first, uh, I'm, it's gonna take me a lot longer to put that puzzle together. And unfortunately, as a, as a teacher, I've observed a lot, for quite a while uh, how artists want to jump immediately to those nebulous areas. And what they're doing often is, um, honestly, uh, wasting their time because they don't have, they haven't put the border in, the border of the puzzle, or you know, what you saw in that image, the butterfly wings, which are a major area first. Uh, what you need to do is do those major areas first before you can put the other pieces together. And, and so those major areas are uh, what uh, the scientists call uh, chunks. These are chunks of uh, cognition that once built can be used at will in various areas of um, your artwork. Uh, but if they are not built, they will never arrive. Um, really, you know, if you look at it, it's taken hundreds and sometimes thousands of years to develop things like perspective, an understanding of light and shadow, 
Um, so these things are not necessarily natural or intuitive to um, the human mind. They are things that have been discovered and our people have to be trained uh, to, uh, to do them uh, properly. Okay, so this isn't, these aren't skills that I just went through that are necessarily uh, talent-based. These are uh, areas of cognition that uh, need to be built through um, training and practice. And that allows us to uh, put these uh, chunks together in order to make the complete puzzle, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back to a screen sharing here. Um, Dale, if you could make sure and let me know that it's, it's happening. We've got you, yep. Yeah, okay. So going back to full screen mode. We're trying, you know, with like these butterflies, we're, we're trying to build those chunks. One could represent a uh, linear perspective. Another one could represent light and shadow, or as the Italians called it, chiaro scuro. Uh, and that's one thing that Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa painting, which is probably one of the most famous paintings in the world, one of the reasons why is he was really understanding through observation how light and shadow uh, worked and were beneficiaries of those observations that he had. But certainly, he wasn't the end of it. There, are, it's, It has continued to develop as more minds have uh, been put to the problem, so to speak. Okay, so one of the things that you can do right now as a test is to see how your knowledge is on all of these uh, different, uh, the, these, these different core exercises that I've been talking about is uh, do a memory test. So there, uh, in this expertise research, they have discovered that there really are two parts of the brain. One that contains uh, short-term memory and the other that contains long-term memory. Now, we don't achieve mastery in short-term memory. Uh, memory, only when something has passed from short-term memory into other uh, tissues of the brain into long-term memory, uh, has mastery actually occurred? And one of the ways you can test this within yourself is to uh, paint entirely from memory, doing things in perspective, uh, with atmosphere, and uh, w without any any sort of reference. So here's an artist uh, that uh, maybe some of some of you have heard of. I'm, I'm imagine a lot of you have not. Uh, his name's John Berkey, and John Berkey uh, was is perhaps one of the most famous science fiction, science fiction illustrators of, uh, you know, 80s, 90s. Um, there's, there's some other artists too that, but as far as doing spaceships and things like that and making things up out of his head, he, he's, he's up there. Okay, so anyway, here's one of his paintings. I selected this painting in particular. It's not necessarily my favorite one of his, but it, it, it proves a point. Okay, okay, so humor me for a second here. So in this painting, you can see that there's a very traditional landscape with a very untraditional spaceship kind of landing right in the middle of it. Now the interesting thing about this is John Berkey in his earlier years, he did a lot of studying of, of he did old pioneer themes and different stuff. It wasn't until later, a later development that he started doing these uh, spaceships. But the interesting thing about it is there was no reference for spaceships. Um, obviously, you know, he hadn't seen one. Uh, there, and and this kind of machinery and stuff like that, uh, there's more people doing things like that today, but he, he was one of a much a smaller number that were doing this kind of stuff. But he's just making it up out of his head. But you can see that it has a sense of light to it, uh, a sense of atmosphere. It has um, a perspective in it. He's using a two-point perspective in this case, in here, and he's doing it all out of his head. So you can see that he has mastered those things that we've just been discussing. discussing, And you can see it because he's done it from memory. So that's what I'd like to um, present a challenge to you, is do something from memory and see how believable you can make it. And it will reveal to you in many ways how many things you've put into long-term memory. Now, if you constantly have to look at a, re a source in order to do, that, do this type of thing, then uh, chances are things are only in your, in your short-term memory, okay? So, uh, what you know? So, what are the things we can do to put things, put um, our knowledge from short-term memory into long-term memory? Well, a big part of it is the is this uh, deliberate practice, and deliberate practice uh, has to be done on a daily basis with a very specific focus on one of those areas that we talked about. It has to be done over 
enough done repetitively enough times until you have it down okay so one of the things that happens in a lot of DVDs you've watched or maybe workshops that you've attended is that usually the artist is just doing a painting of something that they're very comfortable with, something they have mastered, and they are painting in an area uh, like to the edge of their expertise, okay? Now those paintings can be very, or those uh, types of DVDs and paintings and, and whatnot can be very helpful to us to the degree that it inspires us and maybe gives us a few ideas of, oh, use this tool, um, and maybe think about it this way and that way. Uh, but one of the things that can also do is confuse us into how do we start? Oh, how do we, do I start the same way they start? And do I just try and go through the entire painting process just like I've watched them? Well, actually, that's not going to help us a whole lot. Okay. What's going to, what's going to help us? And uh, with the research, uh, with expert coaching, is we have to put the person, or a good coach will put you in the sweet spot. Or in this case, the Goldilocks zone. Now, I don't know how many of you know about the Goldilocks zone, but uh, the Goldilocks zone is uh, basically uh, our Earth is the perfect distance from the sun, right? And it's the reason why we have uh, such abundant life on the planet. Now, a little too close to the sun, we would be like Venus, and a little bit too far from the sun, we're like more like Mars, right? Both which... Um, to our under, uh, current understanding, uh, do not sustain life. Now, in fact, we are, they have discovered an, an, uh, what they call an exoplanet um, in a neighboring uh, star system called Alpha Centauri. And uh, NASA is actually currently building, I'm going down a rabbit hole just, just for a second here. But uh, basically, uh, they're building a, a telescope, kind of like the Hubble telescope, but it's going to be smaller. Uh, it's about the size of uh, a washing machine, but they're going to shoot it out into space, about $25 million satellite, and they are checking out this planet that actually happens to be in the same zone as the Earth, and it's um, it's uh, one star system over. Uh, they Unfortunately, we can't send a, a spaceship over there. It'd take uh, 55,000 years, but what that teaches us is that there's something very important about being uh, close, um, being put in the right spot in order to flourish. That's what a good coach does. Puts you in, a, in the right spot. S assesses where you're at in your work and puts you, gives you exercises in the spot that you need it in order for you to grow. Now if he puts you too far or too close, he or she puts you too close uh, to the sun here, um, you're gonna get frustrated. Too far away, you're bored, right? And you just don't do the exercises. But uh, put you in that sweet spot. It's somewhere between, you know, making you sweat, not overwhelming you. Okay? That's the area where the mind is going to learn the best. Okay, so what I've done with these exercises and, and some of these things by breaking it down and uh, specifically focusing on these exercises is that it puts you into that spot. So um, like in, in the DVD that I've done, I haven't done it where I've done a single painting that I've finished to a degree where I would call it, you know, a finished work of art. But what I've done is do an exercise uh, knowing how, what it feels like to be uh, just beginning and, and trying to figure this out uh, and, and working from that point forward. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is put you in that, in that Goldilocks zone. Okay, so here's, here's an example of Monet where uh, once he has, in, in, in lots of ways, mastered some of those core basics, he knows um, how to get good at things, and he's putting himself in, um, in kind of uh, that sweet spot. Uh, so he's pushing the boundary a little bit here with color, but he's still, uh, what he's doing here is he's using the same composition, but he's uh, changing the color and responding to the light. And so he's uh, doing this kind of repetitive work as deliberate practice. Um, the challenge is, is um, and what makes him go beyond just um, another artist and puts him even further in a category of innovator is uh, he's, he's pushing the boundaries of, of what we think of in terms of color and light. Uh, and so that's, that's where we ultimately want to get to. We want to get those uh, core principles down 
so that we can get to this point where we can use those same principles that got us uh, uh, getting, got us, uh, is where we can master those core principles so that we can go into areas that are pushing the boundary. But a lot of times we want to get to there first. We want to do something like this immediately. And unfortunately, a lot of schools, at least in the United States, uh, kind of push us in that direction. I remember my undergrad, um, you know, uh, they, were, they were trying uh, to, to get us here when we didn't have a clue about any of this other, other stuff that I was talking about. And really, it was, a, it was worthless and it was a waste of time. And unfortunately, it wasn't uh, until later and reading this research that I realized why it was. And so, uh, again, this is, this, is, this is the way we need to practice in order to accelerate our growth and, and cut years off of kind of spinning our wheels. Okay, so one thing that I've done in order to, uh, you know, I've, I've taught a number of workshops and um, I've taught some of these principles and other people that have uh, purchased the DVD have uh, really uh, told me that it's fundamentally changed the way they paint. So here's, here's an artist. Uh, her name's uh, Gerilyn Dirks Broder, and you can see Gerilyn's work on Facebook. Uh, she has been posting, and she's been uh, doing uh, exactly how you know I've been uh, coaching her. Uh, she's been really great to and diligent to do it. She's in her so most of the people in this um, webinar are about the age that she is. She's uh, her kids are grown, um, and she has you know been taking care of ailing parents and. But amidst all of that, she has really wanted to grow and as an artist. And uh, so when I met her about a year or so ago, um, you know, she, she was a little frustrated about where she was at and, and wanted to really get going. And so when we talked about some of these ideas that I'm sharing with you, she really uh, took to it and has, uh, you can see with her work here, uh, really um, uh, taken it to the next level. Uh, and you can see what she's doing here is, is chunking. So chunking is, is the thing that I, that the scientists call where you're taking a piece of the big puzzle, which is, you know, all the elements uh, of art where you lighten shadow, atmosphere, a linear perspective, color, edges, all that stuff. Well, here she's um, focusing in on very specific things, working on a single subject, uh, first doing it in black and white with pencil, then uh, going over it again in color uh, in several different ways, different seasons, in order to um, uh, take things a piece at a time, really delve in and study what's going on with this particular tree. This is on our property up in Montana. She's uh, got a beautiful place. I went up there and saw it um, earlier this spring. But here you can see uh, she is uh, really focused on learning about how trees work and how their shapes uh, work and uh, so she's got this uh, one in particular that she's uh, really studying. So by doing this instead of randomly going out and doing whatever you are inspired by, what she's doing, she's actually improving and accelerating uh, her growth. And you can see all the posts that she has done uh, on her Facebook page. So it's uh, Gerilyn Broder, um, and and I can I, I've actually shared one of them on my Facebook, so you can go go and check it out. But what we've done, and, and one of the reasons why she posted this and others, uh, maybe some of you have seen it, I, um, we put together a 30-day challenge in September. And this 30-day challenge, uh, we required uh, artists to post every single day in September in order to uh, be entered to win a, a Strata easel. Some of you know that I, um, I developed the Strata easel. And, uh, but what we've done through that is, you know, people that have done the DV, take my workshops and things like that, know that I'm all about, um, you know, continuing to support them in, in their growth as an artist. So that's why we put up this competition. And the great thing is we had a tremendous response. People all over the world uh, started, um, but we did have 97 people that uh, did it every day for 30 days. And, uh, and it was amazing to see their growth. But one thing that happened is the ones that had uh, understood the principle of chunking and uh, focused practice uh, were the ones, I think, that uh, uh, accelerated even or, or went, uh, grew even faster. And the reason why they did is because they're very focused and they were taking things in steps. And uh, because of that, they were going from areas that they didn't know how to do very well and specifically foc focusing on areas 
that uh, you're kind of on the edge of their ability and then and then growing a little bit from there. So this is an example with Gerilyn. So here, here's uh, all the names of the people that actually finished the, the Strata 30 Day Challenge. You can see it's, it's quite a list. And we're going to actually do this challenge again in January uh, after the holidays uh, in order to help support people that are uh, committed to, to their growth. So uh, with all of this, this is, this is the reason for uh, – this is not um, – some uh, little catchy formula or something that I'm advocating here. Uh, this is something that is uh, science-based research. It has, um, it, it shows that uh, with the neural imaging, exactly how the brain changes when we put our, ourselves through these types of uh, practicing, this type of practice, and uh, really shows how we uh, we can, uh, you know, accelerate our growth. Because one thing I've I've observed is that people that have not, um, that don't engage in this type of practice, they really can continue to paint for years on end and not improve. Okay, and so here's one of the key reasons why that why I think that happens is because they, um, they they aren't getting the feedback that they need. They aren't getting the proper coaching that they need in order to, to make the most of that practice time. So a lot of people will, will just say, well, you just need to do miles of canvas. You need to do, you know, an acre of canvas, some people say, or, you know, do it 100 times and it'll get better. Well, that's, you, you, certainly you will, you can improve even if, you know, if you're diligent and things like that. But again, if, if you're doing it um, a proper way, uh, and the best way based on scientific research, you're going to go faster. And I guarantee you, Olympic athletes are, this is the way they're practicing. You know, there's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of uh, prestige and endorsements and things like that. And so they're using this kind of thing. And why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't artists use it? Uh, there, there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't. Okay, so... Um, kind of in a nutshell, that's that's a little bit about um, where I'm coming from, the research that I've studied, and uh, the reason why I want to share it with you today. So w one thing I think we should do, Dale, if if you're um, if if you're ready, I think we we could um, all those people that have kind of gone through the the video up to this point, if if you want to uh, give away the Strata easel. I think it'd be a good time to do it. Yeah, let's, um, here, give me two seconds. Let's take this off of, there we go. Um, yeah, once again, thank you to everyone who is uh, still with us. We've got um, more people than what we, what we started with at the beginning of the webinar. So thank you to everyone. Um, we had mentioned it on the sign up page and in the emails that you guys would have received um, but for those of you who stuck uh, with us this far, we wanted to make sure that we had um, uh, taken the opportunity and we were giving away uh, the Strata, a Strata easel. And for uh, Susan, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, uh, uh, say the last name wrong, but Susan Plo, uh, Susan P L O U G H E. Congratulations. You are uh, the winner of the Strata easel. Um, I'm going to send you an email after uh, the webinar and uh, give you some more details on how you can how you can grab that easel. That's fantastic. Congrats. That's great. Is so, now probably a good time then um, to start uh, uh, into some Q and A with. Um, so, uh, if you folks want to start putting some questions into the into the chat um, into the chat bar on the side. I'll start um, picking some out and throwing them past Brian. Uh, so w while everybody's getting those questions together, basically that th this that's the reason for this whole, the the DVD why I did it the way it is. It's it's very different from other DVDs. It's basically uh, since I can't be there, um, you know, can't be everywhere, right? But I wanted to model each of those uh, core exercises in a way that uh, really simplify it down. And uh, so that and put people in that in that sweet spot area, and um, 
I think that's a it's an important part of it. So really with the DVD, I the reason why I recommend getting it is um, this is um, this is about you and 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 not about me. And the, and the reason why I say that is I didn't I didn't uh, in this DVD I didn't put out my best paintings or try to um, uh, promote my work or whatever. It's uh, based on observations of all these workshops I've taught and, and this research, and I, the the presentations are geared towards helping you make that transition from the way you're practicing and painting now in order to put you in that kind of area where you're practicing more like an Olympian. <laughs> so that's, that's what this is about. And that's why um, I think, you know, it's worth uh, getting that DVD. Now I've given you inf enough information. I think you can have some ideas of, of how to do it. But um, uh, anyway, that's, that's there for you as well. If, if you need uh, some extra modeling on, on how to exactly do that. Okay. Um, Brian, is now a good time. While we've got, we're coming up to just past uh, an hour. So now might be a good time uh, to discuss or to give uh, folks uh, the URL to uh, uh, the DVD and the offer that you have uh, to do for everyone on the webinar. Okay, that'd be, that'd be great. Let me get back to my... Uh, um, I, I, you know, I, and I was very long-winded. I apologize for that. I, I'm, I'm glad that everybody's stuck in there with me. Um, but this, this is stuff so important that I, I felt like I needed to share it. Uh, Brian, there's a question right uh, now asking what DVD uh, you were referencing. Maybe just, sorry, a bit of background on the DVD itself. Okay. Uh, somehow it got closed here on my computer. Let me just pull it up one second. Okay. And I'll show you what that is. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone, for the questions that are coming in on the on the sidebar. I'm trying to take take them down as fast as you're writing them in. Um, forgive me if we don't make it through all of them, but I'm taking them down as quickly as I can. Okay. Can people uh, see my computer now? Yes, we've got your computer. Okay. So I'm just going to run uh, just these slides real quick. And towards the end here, uh, basically this is the DVD, uh, Brian Mike Taylor, The Master's Mind. And here is the web link that you can use. Can everybody see that okay? That's the web link that you can use to get. And what we're going to do for everybody that's hung on here, uh, for the next 24 hours, they can get free shipping on the, uh, on the video. So it's streamlineartvideo.com BMT. I've just put that into the chat bar on the side. Um, that free shipping uh, offer is for U.S. domestic, uh, unfortunately, with the high cost of shipping. But um, if you're um, an international customer, you're interested in getting this uh, um, um, this video, we do offer a digital um, option as well that is available from uh, that URL. So you'd be able to, if you visited that URL, you'd be able to download uh, the digital version of that video as well. Okay, should we uh, work, do the Q&A Q here? Yeah, let's take some questions. I'm going to just run through some of these uh, questions. I did see um, uh, some questions earlier from a couple of people asking how to find, um, how to find a coach. Okay, so yeah, that's that's an important part of 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 uh, the it's an important piece of the puzzle if, uh, to find a good coach. So uh, again, one of the things that we've done uh, because in, in, to some degree I've been uh, quite maxed out on on coaching <laughs> or the number of people that I can coach, uh, and I've tried to extend myself out a little bit with the DVD, um, also with this uh, thirty day challenge. Um, but one of the things there, there, there's several things you can do, uh, online. There, there are artists that will, uh, do coaching online if you, if you don't have anybody near you, but even somebody that has, um, you know, taking courses in an illustration program in a, in an area, a place near you, uh, a lot of times the illustration programs, uh, are, are better than the fine art programs in helping you understand these core exercises that I've been uh, sharing with you. 
uh, and, and quite frankly, if I were to do it all over again, I probably would have uh, gotten an illustration degree instead of a fine art degree because I think in terms of the core exercises, they're, they're emphasized more in, in those programs than, than the others. But anyway, that's just kind of an anecdotal uh, thing. The other thing I do, one, one thing I do as far as a coach is I have friends that uh, are artists that uh, know these uh, fundamentals. And very often, I'll take a photo of my paintings and I'll send it to them. Um, and um, you know, I've got a friend, uh, John Burton. If he's uh, if he's around, I don't know if he's online or not, but uh, he's a good friend of mine. And and I'll send him an image and and other friends that I have that, and uh, you know, say, hey, just give take a look at this and what's going wrong, what's going on wrong. Now, our ability to accept feedback, however much it can sting is is so important to our growth feedback is huge so i think that question about a coach is is important uh, i'm also going to be looking at ways and means where i can um, extend myself and maybe doing some live coaching um, via the internet um, as well i think that could be something that could be helpful to people uh, but i know uh, again using your phone uh, if you could find somebody in your community certainly there's probably a school or place where somebody has been um, that knows these uh, kind of uh, core things. And, and what you do is you ask him, you can say, hey, are you very familiar with uh, linear perspective, understanding of light and shadow? Um, and do you know how atmosphere works? And oftentimes you can see it in their work to see if they understand it. Um, that, that's, that's what you're looking for, somebody that can create three-dimensional space. Um questions a couple of questions about the dvd in in particular were um how is the dvd different um uh, how does the dvd differ from what we've learned today on this webinar and another question was does the dvd have specific exercises to work on each aspect yes so that's the, that's the thing about the dvd is that there's like six hours of painting on it or drawing so i'm doing a charcoal drawing of linear perspective I'm doing a charcoal drawing on composition. I'm doing a painting on atmosphere. I'm doing a painting on light and shadow. Uh, so basically, I, I just model for you the exact exercise that I would recommend doing. Um, but here, um, at least uh, you know, I've given you that information where it's um, if you want to, um, if you have a good idea of how that works, you, you can definitely do that. Uh, or kind of have an idea of what those exercises look like. So the, the DVD just has the added benefit of actually seeing exactly how, I, um, how I've learned composition, what, what studies I do, um, how, and, and all those other exercises. Go okay. ahead. Um, uh, Tamara had a question. Um, what exercises, uh, what core exercises can you do to expand your creativity? Oh, okay. Uh, that's a, that's an excellent uh, excellent question. Well, as far as the, the creativity goes, uh, a lot of it will be uh, the way in which you combine uh, two th maybe two art styles that um, are totally different into a third style. Or you know, a lot of the digital um, matte painters and um, people that you know make movies and stuff like that. One of the exercises they do is you know. For, for instance, for instance, they want a robot that looks like a dinosaur. Well, they'll have a picture of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and then they'll have, you know, a truck, and they'll have those two pictures together, and then they'll um, create a new pic, a new, you know, a, a truck machine kind of looking <laughs> dinosaur be with those combinations. So it's all about taking those different chunks that you have, maybe two different artists that you like that don't look anything similar, and then by uh, combining both of them and finding a way to combine both of them creates that new thing. So a lot of times creativity is it's a com it's combining it's almost like combining two uh, you know in breeding uh, a similar a similar principle you know two different dogs to make a new breed kind of thing or cats or or whatever uh, that's often what uh, I see artists doing in order to make that new thing or that new idea. Okay. Question from Bruce was, um, in the DVD, you suggest two hours for intensive uh, learning. 
Yeah. Can you do different uh, chunks per day, like perspective and color? Uh, well, I, I think, honestly, that you do need to take a rest period first. And um, even the research has shown with you know, Olympic athletes and whatever, and, and I've and actually, uh, I, you know, I'll take a, a quick power nap before I would do a, a second chunk, you know, um, or whatever you need to do to rest your mind. Uh, because your mind can, can be pushed out of what is called homeostasis only so far and so long before uh, it gets really fatigued. So I would never do them back to back. Uh, very often I do one in the morning. Uh, and then after dinner, um, I do one, something in the evening. Uh, and that's kind of how the exercises I do. That's, that's kind of how it works. Okay. Uh, there's a question here. How would one uh, better see values outside besides with a red filter that doesn't work for that doesn't work for them? Okay. Better better seeing values. Well, um, one thing is understanding that values are, are relative is is very important. Um, uh, and as far as a red filter goes, you know, I don't uh, I I don't necessarily do that a whole lot, uh, but. Another way that uh, uh, people are using these days that I think can be effective is taking a, a photo with I, your iPhone. Everybody's got a smartphone of some sort, right? Taking a photo and um, checking that against what you've seen. Uh, basically taking an uh, iPhone shot, making it black and white, and and looking at it, and what you're just looking for is not necessarily the specific light or dark with any given uh, value, but the spread. It's almost like with a piano, the notes between uh, the two, or the space between the two notes. How many half steps are there? And that's what you're looking for in, in your values. And so sometimes, uh, you know, seeing it freshly through uh, a small thumbnail in your camera can um, in your iPhone can help you do that. It's something that you'll train yourself over time and you'll get deceived a lot because of color saturation, stuff like that. And that's where, um, uh, you know, an iPhone can kind of, kind of help you with that. It's kind of a little tool that you can use. Okay. Kathleen asks, what does deliberate practice look like? More concretely, what questions do you ask yourself when you're painting uh, with a certain target in mind? Are they specific to the target? Any general questions you use to self-critique as you're painting? Okay, yes. Excellent, um, excellent question. So usually I have, when I'm, when I'm practicing, I actually have a master painting or a master um, drawing that I, am, that I put right next to what I'm working on. That's the target, really. It, and it's not the entire painting or the entire drawing. It's maybe just a section of it. So... What I'm trying to do from that is I'm trying to lift off some of that genius or whatever you want to call it, you know, that great drawing that they've done. And um, either in, in one case, one set of exercises that I do is, is where I'm just copying it. And copying it helps you go delve a lot deeper into and analyzing what it is you're looking at from that masterpiece. And the other part is... Um, uh, once I've done a copy, a master copy of that thing, then I'll I'll throw away the uh, reference that I used, but I'll put that master copy that I did next to the new painting and the new scene that I'm doing, and then I will um, do that new scene, uh, say linear perspective, with that copy that I did right next to it. Okay, so that way. I, I stay focused on what it is, exactly what it is that I'm trying to learn. Okay. Christian asks, um, as you've said, we have, we all have busy lives. How much time would you say is necessary on a daily basis to keep improving without getting overwhelmed or frustrated? Uh, well, if you are very focused in two hours, um, that's what they, that's what they say, you know, as far as deliberate practice and the ability of the mind to be pushed out of homeostasis, two hours of very focused practice a day is um, ideal. But you know, if you can at least get an hour in a day, uh, and again, I, I would emphasize consistency over quantity of time as being 
the more important of the two factors. Okay. Uh, there was just a small question. Is there any difference in the content of the DVD versus the download? And the answer to that is no there, uh, besides the fact just the delivery mechanism on that. Um, got some other questions. Um, sorry, they're roll they continue to roll in here. Um, how do you improve composition skills? This is from uh, Kathleen. Um, I know about the golden um, mean, but how do you apply this to an actual painting? Okay, well, that's one of the demos I do in the in the DVD, and it all has to do, in large measure, to spacing the way you the way you space things. Now, spacing doesn't have to, it doesn't just have to do with shapes, like how far apart shapes are. But also, it has to do with the spacing of your values. How far apart, like I mentioned earlier, like that dark is to that midtone. Okay, so uh, spacing can relate on a, a number of, of different levels. You know, how wide or narrow your cross hatching is um, could be a matter of, of spacing. So, spacing is a, is a big part of it and probably the, the central part of it. So, um, that's something to consider, and that's that's everything that you know. Sp spacing is uh, is uh, basically dynamic symmetry, uh, or the golden section is one way to create dynamic spacing. In fact, the Greeks knew of five different ways, five different uh, what they're called root rectangles, and they're a series of rectangles that can infinitely be divided into dynamic ways. Um, well, so the golden section just happens to be one of them and the most famous. But there's, there's so there's, and, and that's a formal way of spacing, but there's also more of an intuitive way of, of spacing as well, based loosely based on the idea of a golden section. And, and that's what I work on in the DVD. Okay. Uh, Laura asks, do you generally limit your paintings to a certain number of values? Well, we are limited in the sense that we really have like 10 values to work with and, um, and there's some half steps in between there. Uh, you can, you can say there are more values than 10, but basically, you know, clear, clear whole steps. You would say there's 10 and, and the challenge is, is that nature has a hundred I mean, their value, the value range in nature is way further uh, than, uh, than we have in, um, with the paints that we use or charcoal. And so what we have to do is we have to compress values and also manipulate some of our values in order to um, create something that looks uh, believable. And so uh, that's why I talk about, uh, you know, with, even with the iPhone as you're comparing, you don't want to look at specific value notes like on your phone or computer or whatever versus what you're seeing out in nature because even there you don't have that many values specific values on uh, in your paint so what you are looking for is the distance between two different values the distance between light and dark okay i like this question from christian which is uh, do you think observation might help where there is much, not much time for practice? So is observation um, any sort of substitute? Uh, I honestly, I would say, I mean, it does have uh, it does have a place, but a small place. Uh, the reason why it is small is because um, neural uh, the mind needs to fire certain neur neural connections, and those neural connections are linked with your hand, and so those will not fire if not used. So um, the mind is one thing and the hand's the other. And, and I'm gonna launch in real, a quick attack on modern uh, art uh, schools and stuff like that. A lot of them, and they boast about teaching all the way down to the hand, but not the hand. They only teach the mind. So, and I think that's a major mistake. Uh, so you gotta realize that the hand needs to develop what is called muscle memory. Uh, so there, in some ways, there's no substitute for actually doing it. Okay. Um, you're getting a lot of compliments on the painting behind you. Is that one of your paintings? <laughs> uh, yes, I'll, I'll be posting. Um, this is a work in progress. It's, uh, 
it's a pretty big painting. It's uh, for a museum show that's going to be up uh, in November. It's a, a 48 by 72 inch painting. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm working on today, uh, trying to finish it up. It'll it'll probably take the rest of the week to finish it. Another quick question about the DVD. Uh, Susan asks, how long is the DVD? Um, I believe it's five hours. Is that correct, Brian? Yeah, something like five hours, five or six hours. I, I can't remember, but yeah, something like that. Okay. Once again, with lots of exercises on there to um, uh, back up the points you spoke about today. Yep. Okay. Um, we're coming close to the end here. We'll try to wrap this up in an hour and a half. I know everyone has uh, places to be. Um, I like this question. Should there be silence to focus during deliberate practice or would music, classical, be acceptable? What do you listen to? What do you, what do you, how do you handle that, Brian? Uh, that is an absolute, that's an excellent question. And I've, I've actually researched the topic. And uh, I hate to say it, but silence is better. <laughs> uh, and the reason why there's a certain amount of your mental cognition that goes to process even great music like classical music and so um, what I've what my current understanding is that silence is better okay um, is it uh, is it okay to train simultaneously in several fields like portrait, still life, landscape, etc., or is it better to master in only one field? Uh, I think the more narrowly that you can focus, um, I think the better, uh, because um, well, that, that's a that's a that's an excellent question. Um, if you have a, if you depends on how much time you have. Now, if you're an art student and you're not married, you have kids and responsibilities and all of that. Uh, I would I would recommend doing all three because they all complement each other and then they can all help you. Uh, but that's that's a, an unencumbered art student. Um, quite frankly, if you are someone who is uh, you know you have a job or you are, you know, you're a mother of children. Um, I, I would, honestly, I would, I'd focus on one thing. Uh, the more focused you are, the, the better chances you have of, of achieving mastery in that thing. Uh, and that's just given the number, number of hours a day that you have to, to work on it and energy as well. Okay. Um, one question that I do, let me, let me find an answer to one question that just popped up. Question for you, which will be one of our last, is would the DVD be equally useful for a digital artist? Well, you know, that's, that's a great point. Um, so I am, uh, I will be speaking in November at the CTN conference, which is the Cartoon Network conference. And a lot of those artists uh, today are digital artists. And uh, I would say, Yes, that's absolutely important. Um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I've taught artists at Pixar uh, and uh, Disney uh, and um, DreamWorks. And, you know, all of them say to me that the better you understand doing things without digital helps and tools, the better you're going to be in those digital, with those digital tools. So. I definitely think that it can be helpful there as well. And, that, and I guess that's why I was, at first I was surprised I was invited to this uh, conference, but um, you know, in many ways I can see why that, that can be helpful. Okay. So, you know, example, you look at uh, one of the um, art directors at uh, Pixar is Bill Cohn, a friend of mine, and he regularly goes out and, and paints, uh, or does pastel paintings. You can see his work on, on Facebook or on his website or blog and uh, you can see how that's helped him in his work and also how his digital tools have influenced the way he paints and sees things outside too so it goes hand in hand okay um some of the questions that, that pop up about the the dvd uh, just trisha to you uh to your point is there a promo code um, no, if you follow that link that we've posted a couple of times uh, for the, the DVD, that will automatically apply the free shipping in the next 24 hours to uh, the purchase um, for U.S. domestic uh, uh, orders. If you are international, unfortunately, there is a shipping charge on that, uh, in which case there is a link for a digital download version of, of um, the video. The question whether the digital download can be burned to a DVD, 
Um, from my recollection, because I've watched a few of these of the videos, um, the answer to that, unfortunately, given copyright, is not. So when you purchase the the DVD, um, you do have the ability to play it on, um, obviously, on your computer, on your uh, uh, on your iPhone or your Android device, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, and the ability to connect any devices to your obviously to your your television and and watch it that way i do believe there is um access through um some of the online networks like the playstation network as well um so you can you can get it onto your tv but unfortunately you can't um burn um and copy the uh the uh a video onto onto uh, a dvd um we are coming up to 4.30. I know there are still some questions um, that are coming in. Let me just jump back in here. Um, yes, there's still some questions that are coming in. Uh, we'd love to be able to get through all of these questions, but unfortunately, you know, we're in, in respect of uh, Brian's time and of, in your time, um, we're gonna have to shut it down right here. Um, Brian, any parting words for for uh, uh, the people? Uh, yeah, just uh, just to say that you know this is something that uh, I hope uh, with our the hour and hour and a half that we spent together, the best thing that that you that you can do to thank thank me or um, the streamline here is is really just doing the work and uh, doing it on a daily basis and. Uh, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing your 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 growth. So, um, um, you know, uh, contact me. Let me know how it's going, and uh, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear how, uh, how 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 things are working for you, and and how it's changed the way you've uh, um, done your your daily practice. So, let me know. Perfect. Thank you for your time today, Brian. Thank you everyone for um, joining us today. What we're going to do, I've got a couple of other you know, questions. A lot of people have purchased um, the DVD and have noted in the comments. Um, thank you guys all for joining us in the webinar. Um, I'm going to leave, I'm going to wrap it up and leave you with a really quick um, video from the DVD that we're talking about today, uh, Brian Mark Taylor's Ma The Master's Mind. And once again, uh, streamlineartvideo.com slash BMT, free U.S. shipping for the next 24 hours. And we will um, be signing off here in the next second. Uh, here comes the video, folks. Thank you guys very much, and we'll speak Thank very you. soon. Good luck.
All right, are we still live? We would be finished. I'm just going to leave this for a sec. Okay.